Hey everyone, before we get started, let's make sure that we take out pencil and paper so that we can follow along and work out the examples. Today we're going to be looking at simplifying radicals. First I want to talk about what the elements of a radical are. The little tiny number is called an index. The piece underneath the radical is called a radicand, and your answer is called a root. An index in a radical tells you how many times you have to multiply the root by itself to get the radicand. If there's no index shown, it is understood to be a 2. So normally when you see no little number there, you just say it's a square root. Let's look at some examples. If I have the cube root of 125, what is my answer? Now, first I want to look at what the index is. Remember, the index is that little tiny number. So the index is going to be 3. Now, if I ask you what the radicand is, that's the piece underneath the radical, which is 125 in this example. So now we look at the root. Now remember, your index tells you how many times you have to multiply the root by itself to get the radicand. So I want to know something times something times something. Three times is going to equal 125. Well, that means the answer is 5 because 5 times 5 times 5 equals 125. We had to multiply 5 three times to get 125. Now, I want to talk about some calculator steps with you. You should, uh, typically I use a TI-84 calculator, so these steps go along with the TI-84. The first thing that you would do is type in your index, then press the math button. You'll choose option 5. Then you can type in your radicand. So let's do some practice with this. Make sure you have your calculator out, and then we'll proceed. So if I have the fifth root of 243y to the fifth, I'm going to type in my index, press math, choose option 5, and type in my radicand. And your calculator should tell you that the answer is 3. Now that took care of the 243, but I also have a y to the fifth. Think about it this way. You have five y's, and your index is five. How many groups of five can you make with five y's? Well, one. So one y comes out. Now let's think about this. I'm saying that my root is three y. Well. 3y times 3y times 3y times 3y times 3y is 243y to the fifth. So I know my answer is correct. Let's try another example. So we're going to type in our index, which is 4. We're going to press math. We're going to choose option 5. And then we're going to type in 1296. Uh, I can't type in those letters because my calculator doesn't have that function, so I can really only do that for the number. And you should get 6. Now let's look at these number, or sorry, these letters. I have 4 N's and I have 8 M's. My index is 4, so I want to make groups of 4. How many groups of 4 can I make with 4 N's? 1. How many groups of 4 can I make with 8 M's? 2. So if I multiply 6 N to M squared times itself 4 times, I'm going to get 1296 N to the 4th M to the 8th. Let's look at another example. Now, the square root of 144 V to the 8th. This is so simple, we really shouldn't need our calculator. You should know that the square root of 144 is 12. And then, remember, when there's no index shown, we assume that it's a 2. So how many groups of 2 can I make with 8 V's? 4. 
Now the problem is not every problem is going to work out nice and neat like these. Okay, let's try to get an exact answer for the cubed root of 24. Go ahead and in your calculator, type the number 3, press math, choose option 5, and type in 24. What happens? You get this crazy long decimal that never stops. Okay, we can get an estimation, but we can't write down an irrational number exactly. So that's where my lesson today comes into play. So before we get started, I want to go over some steps for simplifying radicals. The first thing that we're going to do is find the prime factorization of the radicand. Now that sounds fancy, but really we're going to just make a tree and I'll show you what that means in a moment. The second step is any sets of n numbers, which n is your index, you need to have one representation multiplied on the outside of the radical. Then you're going to take any remaining numbers that are not in a set and you're going to multiply them on the inside of the radical. So let's put all that into practice so that this makes a little bit more sense. If I have the square root of 12, I'm going to do a prime factorization for 12, which really, I just call this my little factor tree. And I'm going to write out all the factors of 12 until I only get prime numbers. So, okay, 2 times 6 is 12, 2 times 3 is 6. So I went all the way down from my numbers until I could go no further than to have prime numbers. Now, my index is an imaginary 2. Remember, if there's no number written, we assume it's a 2. That means I need 2 of the same number. Well, I've got two 2's right here. That means I can have that written on the outside and whatever's left over on the inside, which I had a 3 left over, so that went on the inside. Let's look at another example. Let's do our factor tree for 24. So I've got 2 and 12, I've got 2 and 6, and I've got 2 and 3. Now I circled those three 2's because my index was 3, and I needed 3 of the same number. Now before I go any further, some of you might go, well, what if I didn't use 2 and 12 to start out for 24? What if I used 3 and 8, for instance? It actually does not matter. In the end, you will get the same answer, so don't worry about that. So I do have 3, 2 circled. That's the number that goes on the outside. I have a 3 left over hanging in my tree. That's the number that goes on the inside. Now remember, because my index was a 3 in the original problem, I need to have an index of 3 in my answer. Another example, let's use 48. We're going to go ahead and do our factor tree. Again, it doesn't matter the numbers that you start with as long as they equal 848, and you will end up with the answer in the end. Now, my index is 4. That means I need 4 of the same number. Well, I've got 4 twos hanging down. That means that that will go on the outside, and anything left over at the bottom of my tree goes on the inside. So 2 on the outside, and that 3 that's left over goes on the inside. Of course, since I started with a index of 4, I will need to have an index of 4 in my final answer as well. Now let's do a bunch of examples together. If you want, go ahead and pause your screen before each problem, and then you can play later to see if your answer matches mine. So first example. Let's go ahead and do our factor tree for 80. 8 and 10, 4 and 2, 2 and 2, 2 and 5. So I go all the way down until I can't go any further. Now, my index is 3, so I need 3 of the same number. That's what goes on the outside. Now, I also have my ends, and I've got 5 ends. How many groups of three can I make with five ends? One. So let's look at our answer. I have the two circled and I have a group of n circled. Okay, so twos are circled, ends are circled. 
one group of two, so I write a two, one group of n, so I write one m. Next, I need to look at what's left over. I have a two and I have a five hanging down in my tree. Remember our steps from the beginning, we need to multiply those and put them on the inside. So two times five is 10, and I have two n's left over. That is my final answer. Let's take another look. All right, so 16. I do already know the square root of 16, but just for kicks and giggles, let's go ahead and use our factor tree. We're going to say 4 and 4, 2 and 2, 2 and 2. Now, because the index is not there, we assume it's a 2. I need 2 of the same number. Well, I have two 2's, but I also have another set of two 2's. What do we do when that happens? We multiply them. So I say 2 times 2 is 2. Four, which, of course, you should have known that because everybody knows that the square root of 16 is 4. Pretty easy there. Well, now I have two x's. My index is an imaginary 2. How many groups of 2 can I make with two x's? One group of 2. So I have 1x in my answer for a final answer of 4x. All right, let's try it with this example. I'm going to look at my tree. And when I do, there's nothing that I can circle. So the square root of 15 is actually already simplified. So that 15 is going to stay underneath. Really, I only have to look at my x. I've got three x's. How many groups of two can I make? One. That means one x goes on the outside, and then I have the one x left over to go on the inside. All right, let's look at this next example, the cube root of negative 8. So whenever you have a negative under there, um, I kind of ignore it until my last step. So I'm just going to do my factor tree like normal. The cube root, so that means that I'm looking for 3 of the same number, which I do have 3 twos. That means that's my answer with nothing left over. Now think about it. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Well, it actually needs to be negative 8. So my answer should be negative 2. Any time that you have an odd index and the number underneath is negative, I always just automatically know that my answer is going to be negative. So I do everything the same, and I just make sure to make my final answer negative. Now, if the index is even, now that's going into imaginary numbers territory, and I will cover that in another video. So that is my final answer. Next, I've got the fourth root, 64x to the third. Let's go ahead and do our factor tree all the way down until we cannot go anymore. And it is an index of four, so I need four of the same number. Now I want to deal with my x's. So I've got three x's. How many groups of four can I make with those three x's? Well, I can't. So there's no x's that I can take out of the radical. So there are four twos that I circled, so a two can go on the outside. And I actually have two twos left over hanging. If that happens, they need to go on the inside. Well, two times two is four. That's where I get the four underneath the radical. And I couldn't do anything with my x's, so they have to stay as well. Remember, because there was a 4 index to start with, I need to have an index of 4 in my final answer. Next example. Again, we're going to go ahead and do our factor tree. Now my index is 5. I need 5 of the same number. I've got 5 threes. That means that 3 goes on the outside, meanwhile the 2 left over goes on the inside. For a final answer of 3 times the fifth root of 2. Alright, so we have another negative number with a odd index, so that is okay to do. I'll just remember that my final answer does need to be negative. So I'm going to do my tree like normal, breaking it down all the way until I get nothing but prime numbers. Now, I need 5 of the same number. I have 5 twos. That's the number that goes on the outside, and I need to remember to make it negative. Now, I can deal with my letters. So, I've got 
three X's and six Y's, and I need groups of five. So, uh, I could not make any groups of five with the three X's, so they just stay underneath. I could make one group of five y with the y's, so one y will go on the outside, and then there would be one y left over, which is on the inside. Another example, we're going to go ahead and do our factor tree first. Now, once that is done, I look at my index, I need three of the same number. That number goes on the outside, meanwhile the other three left over goes on the inside. Now I can deal with my letters. I need a group of three with each of my letters. I can make one group of three with the X. I can make one group of three with the Z's. The Y's I could not do anything with. They have to stay underneath, and I had one Z left over, so that had to go underneath. Another example, let's do our factor tree with 192. Now, I need three of the same number. Well, I actually have two groups of threes. I can make a group of three here and here. What I'm going to do with that is multiply. So I circled twos and then I circled another group of twos. Two times two is four with a three still hanging that needs to go underneath. Now I'm going to deal with all of my letters. I need groups of three. One group of three with the X, and I'm going to have two left over, two groups with the Y, one left over, and I couldn't make any with the Zs, which meant that they both stay underneath. Last example with simplifying radicals. Let's go ahead and use our factor tree. I need four of the same number. That's the number that goes on the outside, and that three hanging still needs to go underneath. Now I can deal with my letters. I can make one group of four X's, and I cannot do anything with the Z's. They need to stay underneath. All right, so now we're going to take a look at multiplying radicals, all right? So when written in radical form, it's only possible to write two multiplied radicals as one if the index is the same, all right? So we can't multiply unless the index is the same. And the steps that we're going to follow is to first multiply the coefficients, then multiply the radicands, and our last step is to simplify. So let's take a look at an example. Real, real simple, okay? So I'm going to take the coefficients and multiply them, 2 times 5, and then I'm going to take the radicands and multiply them, 3 times 2, which 2 times 5 is 10, and 3 times 2 is 6. Now my last step is just to make sure that my final answer is simplified. So in order to simplify, we do our factor tree like we learned earlier. And that actually didn't help me at all, so that means that we are simplified. This is my final answer. Next example. Again, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, and 8 times 2 is 16. Well, we do need to simplify. What is the square root of 16? 4. And what is negative 3 times 4? Negative 12. And there's our answer. Okay, simple, simple, simple. Let's take another look. All right, so we've got to say coefficient 4 times 3, and then we've got to multiply our radicands 5 times 10, which 4 times 3 is 12, and 5 times 10 is 50. And again, we need to simplify. So let's check our factor tree. I actually can simplify. Now, before I continue, normally we would write the 5 on the outside because that's what we could circle. But there's already a 12 on the outside. So we actually need to multiply them. So 5 times 12 is 60, and we're left with a 2 underneath. That is our final answer. Let's look at some examples. So we're multiplying. Remember, outside times outside, inside times inside. Well, the outside's just 1 times 1, and then we'll need to multiply the inside 15x to the third 
y squared. And we'll just need to make sure that's simplified. 15 will not simplify any further. However, we can deal with the letters. How many groups of two can I make with three x's? And how many groups of two can I make with two y's? All right, I can make one group of two with one left over on the x and one group of y's with a none left over. That is my final answer. Next, remember outside times outside, inside times inside. Um, you don't want to forget, remember first obviously the index has to be the same, which it is, it's a 3 in both of these, but then we have to make sure that we include the 3 in our answer when we do so. Next we'll need to simplify, so we'll make our factor tree. And we need 3 of the same number. So I have 3 2's, and I do have a 5 in front, can't forget that. 2 times 5 is 10 with four left underneath because there are still two twos hanging there and two times two is four. Now dealing with the variables, I can make one group of three with my three X's and I cannot do anything with the Y. That is my final answer. Next example, remember outside times outside, inside times inside. So six times one is six and then 80 x to the fourth, y to the fifth. I'll do my factor tree next. And this is a square root, so I need two of the same number. Well, I have two twos and another set of two twos. That means I say two times two, which is four, but I can't forget about that six. Four times six is 24. Now, I have a five left over, so that stays underneath. And then I can deal with my variables. I have two groups of two with my four X's. I have two groups of two with my five Y's and one Y left over. Okay, next example. Remember, outside times outside, inside times inside. So I have the negative on the outside, and then I multiply all that other stuff together to get the piece on the inside. Now I can use my tree. I need two of the same number because it's a square root and it's understood to be a two, which is five. Five times the negative one that's already there is negative five and I still have that three left over. So now we have to deal with the letters and I can make three groups of two on the X's and I can make four groups of two on the Y's. That is my final answer. Next, outside times outside, inside times inside. So four times one is four and then I get 243 X to the sixth, Y to the fifth on the inside. Remember, because I have an index that is a five to start with, I have to make sure that I still have the index of five throughout my problem. So I'm gonna use my tree to factor that out so I can simplify. I need five of the same number. I've already got a four on the outside, so four times three is 12. And nothing is left on the inside, at least for the numbers. Now I have to deal with the letters. I need groups of five. I can get one group of five with the X and one left over underneath and then I can do one group of five with the Y, so take that out, and that is my final answer. Next example, three times two is six, and then inside times inside to get what's underneath the radical there. Let's use our factor tree. It's a cube root, so I need three of the same number. There's already a six on the outside, so five times six is 30, with just that two left over. And now I'm going to deal with the letters. I can make one group of three with the X's and then that Y, I cannot do anything with it. So that is my final answer. Last topic for today is adding and subtracting radicals. Let's look at some prerequisite knowledge first. I want you to combine like terms on both of these examples. So go ahead and pause this video combine your terms, and then play back to see if you match my answer. So 5x plus x minus 3x, I just combine those like terms to get 3x. 
and then I have 2y minus 7x plus y minus 2x, again, combining the y's with the y's and the x's with the x's. So that's prerequisite knowledge. This is going to help you when we're adding and subtracting things with radicals. Not only do like terms include the same variable expression, but they can also contain the same radical expression. When adding and subtracting radicals, they must have the same index and radicand. Be sure to simplify the radical before adding and subtracting. So when you multiply, you do the multiplication first, and then you simplify last. Well, with adding and subtracting, you're going to simplify first and then add or subtract. So that's an important step that you don't want to forget or get mixed up. So let's look at an example. If you see, I have the square root of 3 and the square root of 3. They both have the same index and radicand. You can almost pretend that that square root of 3 is just like a variable. It's just an x. So if I say 3 plus 4, I get 7. So it's 7 square roots of 3. If we look at another example, I've got the square root of 5 plus 2 square roots of 5 plus 3 square roots of 5. So you can almost just pretend that's x plus 2x plus 3x. And if I add those together, I get 6 square roots of 5 because 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. Now when I look at this next example, the problem is the radicands don't match. I have the square root of 12 and the square root of 75. Well, those aren't actually simplified. So if we simplify these first, we might be able to get the radicand and index to match. So do your tree. It's a square root, so you need two of the same number. You've already got a 4 in front, so you've got 2 times 4, which is 8 and then you've got a 3 left over. Let's do this again for that square root of 75. Again, you need 2 of the same number. You've got negative 1 times 5, which is negative 5, and the 3 left over. Well, now they both have a square root of 3. So the radicands actually do match, so I can combine. 8 minus 5 is 3 square roots of 3. Let's continue with this example. So right now, they do not match. Remember, we're going to simplify first. So let's simplify to see if we can make them match. It's a cube root. I need three of the same number. So two times five is 10. And I have two twos left over, which two times two is four underneath the radical. I'm going to do the tree with the next piece. Again, it's a cube root, three of the same number. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, which again, 2 times 2 is 4 left underneath. Now they do match, so I can combine. 10 minus 6 is 4. So my answer is 4 times a cube root of 4. Next example. Again, they do not match, so I need to use my factor tree and simplify first. I need two of the same number because it's a square root. Three goes on the outside with a five left over. And then, of course, I do need to look at my variables. I need a group of two with those x's. I've got three of them. I can make one group of two that gets pulled out with one x left over. Let's do the next piece. Again, I need two of the same number. Negative one times two is negative two with that five left over. And again, I need groups of two with those three x's. Now I have the square root of 5x on both terms, so that is good. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. I can combine. What is 3x minus 2x? Just x times the square root of 5x. Next example. Again, they do not match, so I want to factor tree it. I need 3 of the same number. 2 times 3 is 6 with a 2 left over. Let's do the same thing for that cube root of 54. I need 3 of the same number. 3 goes on the outside with the 2 on the inside. They do match. I've got the cube root of 2 and the cube root of 2, so I can just combine like terms. 6 plus 3 is 9 times the cube root of 2 for my final answer. 
We're going to look at some more examples now. I want you to pause the video and try them on your own and then come back and check with me after you've tried. So we need to simplify first. I need four of the same number. Two goes on the outside, but I do have a two still hanging left over. Now I'm going to do that 48. I need four of the same number. That will go on the outside with the three left over. Now I've got the fourth root of two and I've got the fourth root of three. They do not match. I cannot simplify here. That is as far as I can go. Okay, next. They don't match, so I do need to simplify first. Two of the same number because it's a square root. Six times three is 18 with the two left over. We're going to do it again. Two of the same number. Five times three is 15 with the two left over. Now, they match. I'm going to combine my like terms to get 33 square roots of 2 as my final answer. All right, guys, that is our lesson for today. Be sure to subscribe for more math videos. See you next time.